Okay guys, now that we've learned a little bit about trig ratios, we're going to have a look at working with them a little bit more in depth. What we're going to look at today is finding the size of angles. If we know something about the trig ratio, we can find the angle. So let's say I knew this. I had a right triangle. Or we've got a right triangle. And I know the uh, sine of angle theta is equal to 4 sevenths. Okay. Well, there's a few ways we can look at this. Uh, I'm going to bring out this triangle here. Here he is here. And here is a theta. So according to what I've written here, the sine of angle theta here is 4 over 7. So just to remind you guys that this is our opposite side and this is our hypotenuse, isn't it? So over here I've got my opposite side. In this case, it's 4. And my hypotenuse is 7. Okay. Now, let's just check, because I, I, I think I've done a scale drawing. So let's just check here, make sure we've got those. Oops, pull that out, let me pull it from down here. I'm just going to rotate this around a little bit. We're going to measure that we've actually got line lengths. So I'm going to pull this guy down here. Let's check. As you can see, this side here is definitely 70 millimetres, 7 centimetres there, so that side's okay, so let's move it away. And let's just check the other side here is actually 4. Oh, As you can see, we have a nice 4 centimetres there. So we've actually got a beautiful scale drawing of what we said here. So the easiest way to go here, of course, is to get a protractor. So we've got a protractor down here. Let's come up. Let's go measure the angle that appears to have a sine angle, uh, a sine ratio of 4 over 7. So we're getting on here exactly. And as best as I can see, let's see if we can read that off. We're measuring from around here. 0, 35, 36, maybe 36 degrees. So according to my protractor, theta is approximately 36 to 37 degrees. Now, there's always a bit of human error there, but it looks like, according to this, 36 to 37 degrees. Okay, now that could be a little bit tedious if we do that every single time. So I'm going to show you a way technology can actually help us with that. Okay, let me put my rulers down a little bit. Okay, so here's my calculator. Oh. Alright, if I turn this on here. Alright, we have, as you can see, we've got some tools here. We have sine, cos, and tan. And above that, in the yellow, we have sine to the minus one, cos to the minus one, and tan to the minus one. They actually mean something. Sine to the minus one, or cos to the minus one. So if we have this, sine of minus one means find the angle with this particular sine ratio. So if we know what our sine ratio is, and of course we do in this case, then the calculator will actually tell us. So this is all we have to do. I activate the sine inverse, so inverse sine, and I tell it that my sine ratio is 4 over 7. Close my parentheses. Enter. Oh, well, look at that. 34.8 degrees. Well, how far off were we? We had about 36 degrees. So, according to our calculator, theta is approximately 34.5 degrees. That's kind of neat, isn't it? Okay. One thing you've got to remember to do is go to your mode, and of course, I've got to make sure I'm in degrees because I'm actually entering. I, I want my answer to come out of degrees. So I've got to make sure that's the case. Now the reason we can do that, and I think this is kind of neat, so this is saying that for an angle of 34.5 degrees about, my ratio is always going to be 4 over 7. Now what happens if we change the size of this angle? So 
So let's say we make the angle a little bit smaller. So here we go, let's draw in a side so I've made this angle a little bit smaller. Have a look at what's happened with the triangle. What's going to happen with the four? It's going to get smaller, isn't it? And the seven is also going to change. So as soon as you change the size of the angle, you're changing the ratio. If we made theta a little bit bigger, there we go, we extend it up here. We're making the opposite side here bigger, and we're changing the hypotenuse here as well. We're making it longer. So that says for every single angle, we have one and only one sine ratio, cos ratio, and tan ratio, which is kind of neat. Okay, I'm going to give you a couple of questions. All right, could you do this for uh, come on work, please? You've got your summary page. I'd like you to write down the things that we've just talked about. I want you to find these angles. Do a sketch. But if I know that the sine of an angle is 5 over 8, what's my angle? If I know that the, the cos of an angle is 0 0.1, what's my angle? And if I know that the tan of an angle x is equal to 0.4, then what is my angle equal to? Okay guys, I'll see you on the other side.